let's go back and do a bit more on this consolidation of wealth topic because it's a pretty big issue. Um, it's part of a larger issue just in terms of the way people choose to go about having this argument. Um, I think even people who oppose any type of proposal to a limit on inheritance, uh, I think they would still agree that inheritance itself is a problem in the current system we've set up. But it's to them just a problem that should be left untouched either because they have their own personal stake in the matter where they might be in line to inherit something themselves or because you know they have all sorts of reverence for this purity of freedom thing which I mean really is unattainable um, if you're gonna try and construct civilization with it as the um, underlying foundation um, because yeah people love to throw around the word freedom in its broadest sense and they do it pretty recklessly and they do it mostly when it's only convenient to their end goal and um, a lot of people overusing it and you never see them get into specifics or even try to pinpoint freedoms that they firmly believe they firmly believe need to be restricted for the betterment of the collective because there are free market purists who will concede that you can't have every single market freedom you would like they'll concede that um, as it pertains to the market so um, they'll, they'll agree that you can't have someone working for a penny an hour for you, even if that someone wants to do it. They'll use words like inhumane and they'll say it uh, should be off limits. But they'll never talk about these in contrast to other freedoms which have been demonstrated to be equally as corrosive to the collective. Um, <clears throat> they'll, they'll argue, you know, their end argument will be that it should never be restricted whatsoever as far as something like inheritance goes. So it's, it's an inconsistency, and I've never seen these guys go into these specifics. And I think if they did, and they did it with, with any sort of in-depth analysis and intellectual honesty, they would inevitably have to come across the inconsistency where they leave no room to negotiate anything on inheritance. The inconsistency of that when you counter in their opposition to having a king own them, to having a monarchy system which they do oppose, obviously. So the problem, um, the, the, the kind of counter-argumentation that's most often used against limiting uh, the passing down of decades, you know, eons, <laughs> fucking goddamn eons of legacy wealth, that same kind of argumentation fits perfectly if you're going to make an argument against, um, let's say, the most common best example to use, which is the French Revolution, just outright best example. Because if we look at the French Revolution from the do not restrict inheritance lens, um, the revolution was theft. The revolution wasn't working people, you know, taking what they should have uh, human act right access to. Um, no, if we look at it from this absolutist inheritance, pro-inheritance perspective, all it was was a mugging. One day the nobles owned everything, and the next day, after a brutal bloodbath, uh, the nobles, the blue bloods, um, own nothing. So why does everyone justify this revolution looking back? Now, not everyone. Okay, why do most people? Why do most decent people? Why do we justify this imposition on the liberty of the nobles, of the blue bloods, as an ultimately rational and ethical solution to a problem that existed back then? Well, we do it because we know that the empire overthrown was excessively wasteful, uh, which, in all fairness, to this day, it's still not illegal to be excessively wasteful. Um, but aside from the useless gluttony of it, it's because they didn't earn the bulk of the possessions that they had. They inherited them, and history is just chock full of silver spoon-fed uh, individuals who were conditioned into seeing nothing wrong with squandering what was given to them and aside from that the most insidious part really was that the contempt that they would go on to have for anyone who just happened to not have popped out of the jackpot pussy you know the pussy the kind of pussy they popped out of and as smart and as educated as some of them have been they still weren't smart enough to figure out that there's nothing special about who you happen to have been born to just like being born in a country that you really end up liking doesn't warrant the feeling of pride because pride should always be uh, should always have a connotation to accomplishment and nothing else so um, same should go for our blue blood friends obviously so 
Um, so obviously, uh, some of you, I'm sure, are going to be thinking, well, what the hell does this ancient crap have to do with the current scenario? We're no longer under monarchy. Well, technically, we're no longer under monarchy, but have you seen the current statistics? At least in the U.S.? And people are working longer, harder, making virtually the same they made back in the 70s. Uh, I just looked it up today, actually. Uh, average American makes uh, just over $27,000 a year, which comes to about thirteen twenty-six an hour. $13.26 an hour, which is just unacceptable considering the current living costs compared to the 70s living costs. So technically it's not a monarchy, but it might as well be because um, the, the increased productivity of the working class and the payoff for it, um, we, we all know who got the payoff, we all know where it went. Um, so it is monarchy light. Monarchy under the disguise of a democracy, a joke of a democracy. And I know lots of people think that the inherent root of the issue here is not inheritance. They think it's actually the money system or it's actually um, the fractional reserve banking, which is the only feasible banking system that any sane banker would invest in. Um, but I mean, yeah, the root is just so evident that it's that most people will applaud and permit nepotism driven economy they will sit there and watch as people are given birth tickets to positions of extreme control where they can take advantage by for instance yeah just obvious example opening up businesses where they can easily exterminate all competition by being able to afford losing tons of money initially because they're born to money so obviously they can afford to lose it all they want um, and thereby making it possible for making it impossible for nobody to compete with their, um, you know, low prices. And so all the customers are lured in, all the other um, mom and pop stores are bought out. And as soon as all that's done, boom, the prices skyrocket. We've seen it so many times.